Vitamin K2, a crucial ingredient for heart and bone health. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin that is well known for its role in blood clotting. However, there are two different kinds of vitamin K, each providing its own set of health benefits. Vitamin K1 is primarily responsible for blood clotting whereas vitamin K2 works synergistically with calcium, magnesium and vitamin D to impart a number of important health benefits, including but not limited to Preventing osteoporosis Preventing hardening of the arteries Atherosclerosis 4 and lowering your heart attack risk Directing calcium to your bones, making them stronger, and your teeth to help prevent cavities it also prevents calcium from going to the wrong areas, such as to your kidneys, where it could lead to kidney stones, or your blood vessels, where it could trigger heart disease. Creating insulin to stabilize your blood sugar, keeping your system sensitive to maintaining correct amounts, thereby protecting against diabetes and helping to prevent metabolic problems associated with obesity. Optimizing sexual function by increasing testosterone and fertility in men. Decreasing androgens the male hormones, in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Suppressing genes that can promote cancer while strengthening genes that promote healthy cells. The 2010 European Perspective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition EPIC, study found that high intake of vitamin K2, not K1, leads to reduced cancer risk, as well as a 30% lower risk of dying from cancer. Enhancing your ability to utilize energy as you exercise improving overall performance. Serving as a mitochondrial electron carrier, vitamin K2 also helps maintain normal ATP production in mitochondrial dysfunction, such as that found in Parkinson's disease. Protecting against neurological deficiencies, including dementia. Prevent infectious diseases such as pneumonia. Improving disease activity in those with rheumatoid arthritis, and, in combination with vitamin D, Improving osteoarthritis of the knee Reducing the risk of osteoporosis and spontaneous fractures in adults with cerebral palsy Supporting healthy immune function Supporting growth and development of the fetus during pregnancy Higher vitamin K2 intake associated with improved heart health Vitamin K2 deficiency is actually what produces the symptoms of vitamin D toxicity, which includes inappropriate calcification of soft tissues that can lead to atherosclerosis a recent article in Life Extension Magazine 14 also highlights the cardiovascular benefits of vitamin K2. Importantly, a double-blind, placebo-controlled study published in 2015 found that taking 180 micrograms McGee, per day of vitamin K2 MK7 form for three years improved arterial stiffness in postmenopausal women, especially those who had a high degree of arterial stiffness. This study has been lauded as significant because while previous studies have only been able to show an association, this is the first to confirm that long-term use of vitamin K2 in the form of MK7 does improve cardiovascular health. Prior to this study, it was unclear whether taking additional vitamin K2 could actually reverse calcification of the arteries that had already occurred. Other studies also confirm vitamin K2 helps reduce cardiovascular events and lowers mortality. Other previous studies have also clearly demonstrated vitamin K2's importance for heart health and longevity. In the Rotterdam study, 17 which ran for 10 years, those who consumed the greatest amounts of K2 had the lowest risk of cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular calcification, and the lowest chance of dying from cardiovascular disease. People who consumed 45 micrograms of K2 daily lived 7 years longer than people getting 12 micrograms per day. This was a profound discovery because such a correlation did not exist for K1 intake. In a subsequent trial called the Prospect Study, 18, 19, 16,000 people were followed for 10 years. Here, they found that each additional 10 micrograms of K2 in the diet resulted in 9% fewer cardiac events. Vitamin K2 is crucial for osteoporosis prevention. As mentioned, vitamin K2 also plays a crucial role in bone health and may be critical for the prevention of osteoporosis, brittle bones. Osteocalcin is a protein produced by your osteoblast, cells responsible for bone formation, and is utilized within the bone as an integral part of the bone forming process. However, osteocalcin must be carboxylated before it can be effective. Vitamin K functions as a cofactor for the enzyme that catalyzes the carboxylation of osteocalcin. If you do not have sufficient amounts of vitamin K2, 
you run the risk of both brittle bones and calcification in your soft tissues. In other words, vitamin K2 is necessary to keep your bones strong and your soft tissues pliable. A number of Japanese trials have shown that vitamin K2 completely reverses bone loss and in some cases even increases bone mass in people with osteoporosis. The pooled evidence of seven Japanese trials also show that vitamin K2 supplementation produces a 60% reduction in vertebral fractures and an 80% reduction in hip and other non-vertebral fractures. One Chinese meta-analysis of 19 randomized controlled trials found that vitamin K2 supplementation significantly improved vertebral bone density in postmenopausal women and reduced the risk of bone fractures. Another three-year-long placebo-controlled study done in the Netherlands found that postmenopausal women taking 180 micrograms of NK7 per day increased their bone strength and saw a decrease in the rate of age-related bone mineral decline and reduced loss of bone density, compared to those taking a placebo. The differences between vitamins K1 and K2, and why they are not interchangeable. In the 1980s, it was discovered that vitamin K2 is needed to activate the protein osteocalcin, which is found in your bone. A decade or so later, another vitamin K-dependent protein was discovered, matrix gliprotein, MGP, found in your vascular system. Without vitamin K2, these and other vitamin K2-dependent proteins remain inactivated and cannot perform their biological functions. Another important finding was that MGP strongly inhibits calcification. When MGP remains inactivated, you end up with serious arterial calcifications, and this is why vitamin K2 is so crucial for cardiovascular health. The difference between vitamins K1 and K2 was clearly established in the Rotterdam study, published in 2004. A variety of foods were measured for vitamin K content and vitamin K1 was found to be present in high amounts in green leafy vegetables such as spinach, kale, broccoli and cabbage. Vitamin K2, on the other hand, was only present in fermented foods. It's actually produced by specific bacteria during the fermentation process. Certain bacteria in your gut naturally produce vitamin K2 in your body as well. Interestingly, while the K1 in vegetables is poorly absorbed, virtually all of the K2 in fermented foods is readily available to your body. More recent research has identified the foods highest in vitamin K2, I'll discuss that further below. Vitamin K2 can be further broken down into 1. MK4, Manaquinone 4, a short chain form of vitamin K2 found in animal-based foods such as grass-fed butter, butter oil and pastured egg yolks. Avoid supplements containing MK4, however, as supplements only use a synthetic form of MK4, typically obtained from tobacco plant extract. MK4 also has a very short biological half-life, about one hour, making it a poor candidate as a dietary supplement. That said, natural MK4 from food is important for good health, as MK4 plays a role in gene expression, turning some genes off and others on, and is therefore important for cancer prevention. 2. MK7, Manaquinone 7, Longer chain forms found in fermented foods. There's a variety of these long chain forms but the most common one is MK7. This is the one you'll want to look for in supplements, as this form is extracted from real food, specifically natto, a fermented soy product. The MK7, which forms in the fermentation process, has two major advantages. It stays in your body longer and has a longer half-life, which means you can take it just once a day in very convenient dosing. Research has shown MK7 helps prevent inflammation by inhibiting pro-inflammatory markers produced by white blood cells called monocytes. Contraindications While non-toxic, people who are taking vitamin K antagonists, i.e., drugs that reduce blood clotting by reducing the action of vitamin K, are advised to avoid MK7 supplements.38 also. If you are pregnant or nursing, avoid vitamin K2 supplementation higher than the RDA, 65 micrograms, unless specifically recommended and monitored by your physician. If you or your family has a history of osteoporosis or heart disease, I strongly advise adding vitamin K2 to your diet. Taking a little extra vitamin K2 every day is a simple way to ensure your blood vessels don't calcify. However, if you have experienced stroke, cardiac arrest, or are prone to blood clotting, you should not take vitamin K2 without first consulting your physician. Signs and Symptoms of Vitamin K Deficiency The following conditions may put you at an increased risk of vitamin K deficiency. Eating a poor or restricted diet. Crohn's disease, 
ulcerative colitis, celiac disease and other conditions that interfere with nutrient absorption. Liver disease that interferes with vitamin K storage. Taking drugs such as broad spectrum antibiotics, cholesterol drugs and aspirin. Some of the signs and symptoms of a vitamin K deficiency include Blood thinning, poor clot formation, easy bruising and excessive bleeding from wounds, punctures or injections. Heavy menstrual periods, anemia, looking tired and pale, feeling weak and listless. Bleeding from your gastrointestinal tract, blood in urine and or stool, frequent nosebleeds. When supplementing, balance vitamin K2 with magnesium, calcium and vitamin D. One of the major benefits of getting your nutrients from a very whole food diet is that you're less likely to end up with lopsided nutrient ratios. Foods in general contain all the cofactors and needed co-nutrients in the proper ratios for optimal health. Essentially, the wisdom of Mother Nature eliminates the guesswork. When you rely on supplements, you need to pay closer attention to how nutrients influence and interact with each other in order to avoid getting yourself into trouble. As mentioned, we know that vitamin K2 acts synergistically with magnesium, calcium and vitamin D, so it's important to consider all of these ratios. Unfortunately, we don't yet know the precise ideal ratios between all of these nutrients. Some general guidelines and considerations include the following. Magnesium will help keep calcium in your cells so they can do their job better. The ideal ratio between magnesium and calcium is currently thought to be 1 to 1. Keep in mind that since you're likely getting far more calcium from your diet than your magnesium, your need for supplemental magnesium may be 2 to 3 times greater than calcium. Magnesium and vitamin K2 also complement each other, as magnesium helps lower blood pressure, which is an important component of heart disease. Vitamin K2 has two crucial functions, cardiovascular health and bone restoration. By removing calcium from the lining of the blood vessels and shuttling it into your bone matrix, Vitamin K2 helps prevent occlusions from atherosclerosis. Meanwhile, vitamin D helps optimize calcium absorption. Vitamins D and K2 also work together to produce and activate matrix GLA protein, MGP, which congregates around the elastic fibers of your arterial lining, thereby guarding your arteries against calcium crystal formation. As for how much vitamin D you need, I strongly recommend getting your vitamin D level tested twice a year, summer and winter to help determine your personal dosage. Sensible sun exposure is the ideal way to optimize your levels, but if you opt for a supplement, your ideal dosage is one that will put you into the therapeutic range of 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter.